So good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Tamar Russell Brown, and I'm from Gallery Sitka. We are located in Shirley, Massachusetts. And this summer, end of summer, early fall, we have had a show called Harvest, which is all about celebrating this time of year. Because it's a beautiful time of year, agriculturally, it's also a very um, fruitful, if you will, time of year. It was a wonderful show that I feel like um, it was the perfect time to do. We also had this show juried. Um, we had three jurors who put together the work that was part of the show. And tonight we have with us a fine artist from New Hampshire, who, from, who is from Jaffrey, New Hampshire. And she, her name is Chris Reed. And her piece, one of her pieces actually took the first prize in this show. So we're very happy to have you with us tonight, Chris. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Happy this is to be here. <laughs> Good. Yeah, I'm happy to have you. Um, we're going to start with a little bit about your life. And I thought maybe you could tell us a little bit about where you're from and your educational background to get started. Oh, all right. Um, I'm from Endicott, New York. And um, I, let's see, I went to Buffalo State University. And um, I also went to Siena. I went to Italy during my time, studied art abroad. And then I did masters at Rochester Institute of Technology. Um, many classes all over the place. And uh, so that's kind of my educational background. And um, been a teacher. I taught many grades, different levels from K through 12 to private to New Hampshire Institute of Art. and. Um, but I've always done my artwork, always. <laughs> I just kept coming back to it full time, you know, just I always. And it was funny um, that it, we were talking about uh, the history and I was like, I had a flashback last night, you know, in my early years. And I remembered the kindergarten teacher painting and we were supposed to copy her painting. And I, I was like the first time I, like, I got all excited. And I have never stopped not being excited about that. <laughs> I just loved painting and I just loved it. All the art sound I've been different from drawing to um, printmaking. And um, I was telling you the other day how I wove tapestries, but they've all, it, most of them have been about the um, uh, landscape um, and quite abstract, you know, that during that time. And when I moved here and then my daughter was in, um, she was just born and um, let's see, it was about two years in to that. I, um, they offered me a show and I gave me money towards framing. <laughs> and I said, I can't do weaving. It just takes too long. And so I switched over and I was just did a pastels and um, I've been doing pastels and oils ever since. But I, um, the reason I had been weaving is because I had an allergy. And since that time, I, you know, I've tried to, I started painting outside is what I was trying to say. And I just fell in love with painting outside. Um, I just, it's uh, about the sound and all your senses, um, smell, sound, animals come up and wonder who you are, you know. <laughs> Dragonflies, they, they, they come land on your painting and bees try to, you know, they see a color and they think that it's like something that they can pollinate. <laughs> it's been really quite an experience and I, I just have fell, fallen in love with painting outside. So that's a little bit of my history. So how did you start as an artist? Did you start with the tapestry or did you start as a child drawing? And oh, writing? child drawing constantly. I just loved it. Um, so, I mean, I did everything. I mean, I would get interested in something, you know, paper mache, you know, I did my poor mother, all that gunk all over. I made shoes, you know, I went and there, the Endicott Johnson shoe factory was there and this guy gave me all these, this leather and showed me how they made their shoes and I made my own shoes. I just was fascinated with all kinds of things. So from then on, I just was, um, I just loved it. Um, all kinds of forms of art, you know, and, um, and I do it, it, it. Designing a shoe is really an art form, you know, when it's done well. So I just have loved all of that. So, so how did you get started like a more formal um, career as an artist? 
Um, I, when I went to school, I studied that. And then in Italy, um, I studied all kinds of, you know, art there and saw all the artwork from all over the world. And, uh, um, yeah, and my mom was very supportive. I mean, my mom being French and she was from France, I went and visited all the relatives and they're all like really quite, they love their art. They love their music and opera and all of that. So I had all of that. I went to the opera all the time when I was a child. Um, it was, you know, I didn't know anybody that didn't do that. So, um, and we just came from a middle class family. So it was very special when I think of that. I went to the opera all the time and saw that. So. Yeah, I did want to ask a little bit about that. Actually, we kind of touched on it like in our brief conversation yesterday, but I was kind of wondering, you know, from an American standpoint, we've got the European um, sensitivity because you've been there, you're from there really. Um, how, what's the difference, would you say, between um, the arts in Europe and the arts here? Would you, would you say that there is a difference? I, I think so. I, I, they, they train their, you know, it's taken very seriously, like in France, but I don't think that it, it's the same there as here where, you know, let's say the parents don't want their children to go in the arts because it's not enough money, do you know? Um, so in that, it's the same, but it's different because they really do love the arts. And, and just, you know, they, they, my mom always, you know, would display like for breakfast or something, it just always beautiful, just um, fruit and the color was gorgeous. And when I went over there again and visit all the relatives, they did that beautiful platters, just beautifully arranged. Even when they were starting to cook, they'd arrange all their vegetables and in color. It was just like, I thought, oh my gosh, it reminded me of my mom, you know, who passed away. I, I just, it was great fun just to see that all again, because I hadn't, I do it myself, but I hadn't experienced it in that way. So that was great. And I did a whole um, food travel and painting series. And you know, so much of that was like an influence from my mom, but I, uh, most of it was from California. So um, that I wrote about because um, when my daughter lived there. Yes. So. Should we jump in and I, is that the article that you sent me that we could? I did. I, I sent you that article. I thought it might be kind of nice to expand on, you know, with the harvest and all of that. It's all <laughs> harvesting the grapes, you know, in the, in the orchards. It was just um, in the great, yeah, it was just beautiful there and a great fun. Let me do that. I will flip the screen and um, show everyone. So just to let everybody know who I am. My name is Tamar from Gallery Sitka in Shirley, Mass. And we're talking with Chris Reed, she's from New Hampshire. We're talking about her work. She took first place in our Harvest show. And um, she sent us this beautiful article about food and travel. Could you tell us a little bit, Chris, about the paintings that are part of this and, and walk me through them and I'll just roll through them one oh. by one. Yeah, I mean, these are vineyard, that's a vineyard painting um, that was way up on a hill. I can't even remember where, you know, it was. I went all over the place um, and just painted and, um, and it, it was really quite exciting. <clears throat> so I just like that particular one way up on top of the hill, so. Um, and where is this? It's out in California, close to Mountain View there. It's out, um, I can't remember the place right now, but um, the, the other paintings are in the, near the, um, oh yeah, and the, yeah, I see the, the, yeah. So, and then the food series I did with that. And it, it was really in memory of my um, just heritage of how things were always placed so beautifully on the table and arranged. So. And the colors, I'm always amazed because I'm a, quite a gardener. My dad, he was a farmer, so I have this farmer gene in me. <laughs> I just love the gardening and uh, that's part of being outside too. So um, all the colors and just beautiful. So I've combined everything. What type of farmer was your father? Um, he was a farmer out in Nebraska. And, um, and then, you know, the... Um, he he left all of that and he he when the 
when the um, there was a great big flood and everything and it, he lost relatives and he just I think he lost heart with that um, whole thing and he didn't want to do that anymore so he he when he during the war when he met my mom that was it so anyway and I think he just uh, maybe wanted to have a different kind of life and which he did he was settled in um, and well, New York. So that's where I was brought up. Very interesting. That, that Nebraska is really big farming country. Like that's huge land, very open. Corn, corn country. <laughs> very interesting. So that was his roots. And then, so being raised by him in New York, um, that would be a very, so you're very close to nature and to the garden. That's right. It's it's like a real combination. My mom really prom helped me, you know, promoted the arts. She was always, you know, draw. She was always drawing, and um, yep, she she bought me lots of materials. She encouraged me. Wonderful. So these yeah, are her. Yeah, her her um, uh, like her relatives. They they were like one of them was very talented in music, which is my, my daughter now that she's um, quite a composer and she has her PhD in that. So um, it just runs in the family, so. Creativity usually does, it often. <laughs> so let's go to the next one. Could you tell us about this one here? Um, yeah, this was in um, a vineyard in R Rubino. Uh, my, um, so, Anyway, the, it, yeah, the, this vineyard, it was like all these, um, uh, these, these grapes from, um, most of them I think were Syrah grapes. And people would come and, and talk about um, their, uh, the, the, you know, the, the, oh, the vats and, uh, you know, I, somebody had said, oh, you should go and paint out in the uh, up above, you know, and then the guy who, who was, ran this vineyard he he came down and he said like they have snakes and stuff in there and i go like ah, i'm not going there i only you know i have high respect for you know being a place that i'm not aware you know where i am <laughs> with the bugs and everything so um it was really quite the, you know they were just talking about the vines and how old the vines were and it was just a beautiful place um this was savannah chanel up in there and um yeah, he bought one of my paintings and gave me a case of, of uh, Syrah wine, which was really quite lovely. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> yeah, and, and somebody else bought a painting. They, they, they just wanted a painting of that place. So I sold it right off my easel. <laughs> it was really fun. <laughs> so That's wonderful. And let's see the next one here. You've got a couple paintings here. Oh. So the, the, the bottom one here is, um, it's in my neighborhood here. And um, so um, a painting that I, I did just down the road. Um, they, I called it freshly plowed, but I was corrected. It's freshly harrowed <laughs> by the farmers. <laughs> um, so um, this field, I just, I, I, I love this field. It's a Sawyer farm, but it was full of like granite. I mean, our, 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 over here where the granite state and definitely, I mean, he was rolling in granite into his truck and everything. And, um, and it just kind of, they, they come up off of the earth, up from underneath the earth, these <laughs> rocks, you know, it's not like the Connecticut Valley, which I painted a lot over there too, where the, the soil is just, um, orange you know just beautiful soil so i appreciate though i just fell in love with the way the light hit this place and so that's it's called i called it freshly plowed so that's anyway. this one here right yep <laughs> but it is freshly harrowed i mean they didn't uh, plow it <laughs> i just thought that was funny what time of year is this here um i'm trying to think it's um it's, it's probably spring because they were just plowing all the fields. Yeah, it's very nice. So yeah, there's something about fields actually in the color of the, the dirt. And I know like, you know, the Pioneer Valley has a certain color, like the South has a certain color, whatever the exactly. make of the earth is, is what gives it the color. It's really interesting. Right. Yeah, it really is fascinating how that happens. 
whatever is kind of, I guess, whatever came from the rivers that like plowed through and, you know, made, left deposits. And what's this one here on the top, this little one? Yeah, I was trying to think of where I did that one. I just, I can't remember exactly where I did that one. It was in that same vicinity. I kind of went over to a lot of the vineyards and just, you know, popped in there. It was in a parking lot way on the other side. And I just really liked it because it was way up high. Some of these hills, up and down the hills. So it just, it was really quite beautiful there. So, so can you tell us, Chris, a little bit about your process? Um, what type of material medium you're using? And um, do you normally sketch first and then paint, or what's your process? Well, I, I used to um, do a quick sketch of where the darks of the lights were. But since, you know, um, I, I go around now with my iPad and I photograph a lot of different scenes, and, um, and then I take them and I kind of um, work them to simplify them or see if I, interested in painting and then I, I when I once I find a spot then I will paint a series in that spot like the um the harvest um painting that I did um I have done all series also the um the bee conservancy I have I'm still working on a series with that because I re um I just went back to it it's, it's my garden so I kind of carefully <laughs> watered my garden and made sure that everything was you know because um, I, I wasn't finished with the series so um, anyway that's that's what I usually do and I underpaint um, I, I underpaint with um, like quinacrin orange and different colors that are um, um, to get the to just figure out where the light is and where the darks are so um, so that and I found that if by underpainting these paintings, they come out brighter um, and in different light. So that during the day, whether it's night or day, it, it changes, the, the color will change and you'll see the different darks in the color differently because of the underpainting that I do underneath. And I found that I've been working on that for quite a few years and very successful. Um, because I like the paintings to show up for the different light um, in, in your house, you know, so like once it starts getting dusk, then the, um, it'll show um, a different colors. Um, so anyway, but that's what I, it's a technique that I really worked on. Well, let me open the ones that if you ever want to, okay. while I switch here, I want to open the two that are in the show. I think, Chris, I see one of them behind you. Is that? Yes, I, I hung this one here. We'll look, we'll look at your screen. Can you show us the one behind you? Um, yeah, I, I, it's right here. I mean, I turned, I had to turn off the spots because they were so reflective, but you can kind of see it in back there. Um, so. Here, let me, I think I have it. So let me flip the screen again and we can show it here. It's this one, correct? Yes, and it looks completely different here. See the different light. I don't know if you can see it. it it's so much, the, the light is so much more intense. I, it, it just, it shows up differently all the time. So yeah, that for some reason, I, um, I'm not sure on everybody's computer, it looks so different, but it's way more orange in this piece here than what it is there. So um, yeah. So there's nothing like seeing a piece in person is what all I can say. <laughs> That's so true. I agree. That's why it's really hard. Uh, you know. And it does change with the light. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's interesting to see that one. I, um, it seems like when I sent that one, it had a lot more orange in it. But now when I see it up on this, you know, but every computer is a little bit different color. So That's true. Does this one look that much different? No, that one looks pretty much the same. I have that here too. Um, and I'm working on a series on, on that. Um, I continued a series. I sold um, a couple of the paintings already. And then, so I decided to revisit. I wasn't finished, you know, the, uh, the uh, um, frost finished me off there and I wasn't finished <laughs> you know, with the, the paintings. And it really is, it's just covered with bees. 
and a monarch butterflies and the sound of it and the bees just buzzing it really has this motivated me to just think in a different way the sound is really important to me i didn't realize how important my daughter definitely has uh made a powerful influence on me because i i i hadn't understood that you know you don't understand a lot of things about yourself but um sound is really important to me so the some of the paintings in behind i've called them the spectra and allegro because of the um the sound of the you know the the sound influenced me so much which one specifically could you show us behind um, you yeah let's see if you can see it here this one's called allegro i don't know if you can see it completely but i you know it's online too and um i just uh, you know it's um uh, and then this one's called spectra and spectra it it it's a it's a term that um and i i like the name because it, it also has the idea of color but it also um it means in you know vibration too um dumbed vibration when when i was painting here it was just the vibration of all that um pink flower which the, the blue stripe which they don't want there but it just um anyway it was just beautiful and just vibrated the all the color so um and when you say um that you discovered between music and your painting or sound and your painting yeah sound influences me and thoughts influence me uh, i i just um being outside is quite um, um i know that one time i did a piece that i was listening to a bach piece and um and this this gal bought this painting and she said it reminds me of music i'm like really i said i was like shocked that <laughs> because i hadn't realized that i was like you know transferring some of that into my work i mean you you as you're working you discover so much about yourself as you're you know you don't realize you see it you can see yourself reflected in your work and things that you're working on and different truths and you really start moving beyond yourself the more you paint and that and that's a wonderful feeling so i learned a lot from just studying and being outside with nature just as amazing how much i've learned um it's all non-verbal obviously it's like painting <laughs> that's the wonderful thing about art it, you know it's it's a visual communication right and, and we so underestimate it um the visual communication but we all use it i see people they use it and they they don't we don't kind of respect it but we all use it so um but as an artist you really get to study that whole thing i was on um, this piece up here it this i remember like working on it and i i just did this little stroke work and i said oh that reminds me of like some handwriting and often i'll think of that when i'm when i'm using my stroking different kinds of things and um and <laughs> this lady when it was at in this um it was at the hudson river valley art association it, it was accepted into this you know they have this big show at the salma gandhi club and anyway and she commented she said i picked that just for that stroke right there and i you know you don't think anybody would notice something like that and i remember doing that stroke and saying i love that you know that stroke and i i try to think of that on terms when i'm stroking you um a lot of times handwriting is so important and everybody's handwriting is so different and i remember as my my mother's handwriting what it looked like in french and what it looked like in english and how she did change so it was really something really i go i wonder why it changed why her handwriting changed you know when she started writing in english so i mean and of course we don't write as much anymore other than our signature but it is all unique and uh and you'll ask painters when they sign their pieces especially oil painters it's not the easiest thing to sign an oil painting <laughs> it's, it's easier pastel painting to sign a painting so um but it's really quite fascinating i i think um and my daughter did a whole piece on um with the the sound of the 
of the paper, the handwriting hitting the paper. So I thought that that was, you know, and then that stimulated me too to think in those terms too, that that sound. So um, I, I love her, all of her stuff that she's doing and it has influenced me also. So yeah, we, we want to work on a piece together. So that's what I was kind of working on with his gardens. And she taped all the sounds to the um, bees. And I don't know, it's hard because you have so much road sound. And um, so she was just trying to, um, I don't know, filter that out. So she, she has to listen to it still. But she, she anyway, the, the bees are just amazing here. Um, and it's all these bees from a friend of mine. Um, her, she has a Russian or German, yeah, Russian beehive, and it's in a little building, and these bees are just amazing. I know it's all her bees that come to my flowers. And so anyway, yeah, it, it's really, I just love them. I, all the bumblebees and the bees, I just, I don't know, and they don't bother with me at all. I go right up to them, and they don't, you know, they don't sting me. They don't get scared. <laughs> So that's your B series that you've been working on, the one that you had in this. Wait, B Conservancy. I'm still. I, this is one recent one. I'll show you. Um, I'm working on this. It's a, quite a big piece. Let's see. Can I? Can you see it? Let's see. Kind of. You see it here? <laughs> I, it's not done, but I'm I'm working on this whole garden series. So can you see that then? Yes, we can see it. Um, yeah, so um, I was just waiting for the light because um, we've had all that California dust coming in and it just, I could say it's really bright outside, but then there was all this dust and it was all muted. So um, I was just kind of waiting for the brightness and if not, I was gonna work with it the way that it was. <laughs> so, so I to ask you with all the, um, being a New Hampshire painter, you're, the seasons are, I would say the winter's quite long. What's your do, favorite season to paint in? Or do you, I notice behind you, you have some winter scenes. Yeah, I, um, I'll paint out the window or I'll go outside and paint. Um, yeah, I'll get in my boots and my gloves and get out there. I've got a little, I, this last year I had a heater, I was cheating, I got a little heater to heat up. Um, so yeah, I went out there at sunset. So um, I call that, this, this one over here, a, a hint of spring. And then this one I painted looking out the window. It was just at sunset and um, you could just see a little speck of light in somebody's um, window. And I just love that feeling of, you know, they had that light on every night, you know, <laughs> you just see like, and then I looked out at this other window and I said, uh oh, that neighbor's house who isn't there is in trouble because I think they have a broken water pipe. <laughs> so observation goes a lot of different ways, <laughs> which they did, mind you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. Yep. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's what I love to do is observe. So there we go. Which is helpful in a neighborhood. <laughs> So really? I want to ask you, Chris, a little bit. We had a nice chat yesterday and you brought up. Oh, you faded out. Faded out, sorry. Um, I wanted to ask you about the comment you made yesterday about um, your name and being a woman as an artist and wondered if you could maybe make some comments about that for us since this is an all women's yeah, show. I, right. I changed my, um, I, like with my name, Chris Reed, I, um, I, just made it Chris so that it could be interpreted either way. And many times um, they thought my husband was the artist. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I think it does. I think that, um, you know, there is a discrimination with women and men, I'm afraid. And I'm hoping that that will change. Um, so, but it, it it, you know, so I, but with you don't have to be seen if you put a piece in. So you, you know, you could be anybody until they meet you, right? Yeah. And that maybe you like you more seriously, right? <laughs> right. And I wanted to know you mentioned. Um, sorry if my computer's a little clunky. Yeah, it just froze a little bit. It froze a little, right? I'm so sorry. Yeah. Um, you mentioned about your daughter being the composer. 
And um, could you tell everyone that comment you mentioned to me about what was said to her? I think one of her- What was that? I can't remember. Um, well, you said that there were- um, Oh yeah, they they um, they said that uh, yeah, women have no business being in the composing department. That was in Miguel, you know? and um, and I, he retired that year. So anyway, <laughs> thank goodness. But yeah, it's been yeah, being a woman. Um, I I remember you know years ago, just you know you either uh, my dad goes like you're a teacher or a nurse, you know. <laughs> It's hard to believe at those times, and I'm glad things have changed. So we have a question. I just noticed Jennifer. She said, "What type of music does your daughter compose?" It's an interesting question. I don't know the answer. Well, you can visit her website. Um, it's Leah Reed Music, and she um, and it's spelled the last name is spelled the same. And yeah, it's um, she's gotten into this year of some international shows, so. She's teaching at the University of Virginia right now online. And um, so, yeah, check her out. Thank you, thank you. So I wanted to ask a little bit about New Hampshire and the art scene in your town, maybe what brought you to that area and kind of what you think of. Um, I know at least from this part of Massachusetts, we're very close to you. Um, we definitely think of Peterborough as a art, little art town and a little bit of Jeffrey as well. And I wondered if you could maybe tell us a few things about um, what the art community is like there in Jeffrey, New Hampshire. In Jeffrey, New Hampshire, well, I'm really part of, a, a, a good deal part of the, um, I mean, there's arts, uh, you know, the arts, I'm, I'm involved with all the arts in the community and also a member in Portsmouth, the New Hampshire Art Association, and um, I'm a member of uh, quite a few different pastel societies um, in the area and, and the New York City one too. So uh, I'm an associate member there. So, um, but the, but Jaffrey um, in itself, you know, we have um, different music that comes in and anyway, it's a Dublin, you know, the, the, the let's see Dublin I mean the Sharon Art Center used to be the the place you know but then it all closed down so we have a a, a huge theater that's go, coming up and um so th that should be happening it was supposed to happen but the COVID kind of stopped it from happening so it, it's up and coming though it's all built ready to go so we're, we're going to be quite come quite a center for the arts yeah. That's wonderful. And there's a lot of pastel, um, there is a New Hampshire Pastel Society, correct? Yep. There's a New Hampshire Pastel Society, which I'm part of. Yeah. Um, and then they just, there's a central mass one that just um, came about, which I'm a little closer to. And I, I paint with a lot of artists, you know, out in the area, oil painters and painters and um, out in Vermont. Um, I like to paint with some of those painters. I went up to the Fells and painted there and showed there. So it's just like, yeah, I like, uh, I like going all over the place. So do you have a, I, and I did say John's, I was really quite proud of myself because I, I made a little package like this and I prepared it and I, I got it down to just like a few colors because it's hard when you're a pastel painter. <laughs> and uh, I did that really nice job. I made like, I did eight paintings, you know, for, and I gave each one um, of the family um, a painting. So, um, and had a couple for myself. So there we go. So I was um, painted out on the, um, it was a really nice painting out on the, the beach and, uh, yeah, people kept coming up and were fascinated with the painting. <laughs> it was kind of funny. <laughs> Do you have a favorite location? Do you have a favorite place for painting? Is there a certain inspiration you get more? Yeah, I, I have gone back to the wetlands many, many times, and it's quite complicated to paint there. Um, so I, I just keep getting drawn back there a lot of times. And this year I painted down, um, I call them the water's edge. And I, I'm doing a series there. And it, it might be too cold now <laughs> to go down there. Um, but I, I, I'm thinking of going back there. But I, I want to have to finish my series for the, um, the garden because this is like, you know, it's going very quickly. And we're talking about a frost maybe tomorrow. So 
Um, yeah, so everything's getting covered. I, I'm not going to let it frost. It's just only going to be 33 or 34 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> can't believe it. It feels like it's come a lot quicker this year than normal. Which is Yeah, it really does because of this whole time of this COVID time. Do you know, if time goes a little bit faster when you're home. So yeah, I'm usually out and about in different places more. Yeah, it's been a, a bizarre summer. Well, I <laughs> circle back to a little bit the harvest theme and ask you if you had in your travels, in your life, if you had seen any harvest that you remember or something special that you take from this time of the year? Well, I, I think that the, before the cut, my, my, my field, I, I just was so, um, I, I was on, I, I tried to relax when I was painting, but I was a little bit on the edge because of, uh, um, that I was just afraid of the field being cut and then it's never looks the same. That's it for the season as far as I'm concerned because there's all these beautiful flowers that come up and the light and it's just fresh, you know, this, the, and, and right when they, they, after they cut the field, it's just never quite the same. So, um, yeah, and the, the Peter came out and it's like, I asked him, I'm like, can you just not cut this field? I'm not quite finished here. And he, he, he gave me a couple of days to finish up. So that was really nice of him. So, um, but I also, the, I, when I was out in California, I just loved when they were harvesting all the grapes. They were Syrah grapes. And it was just, it was a really special time because they really had to pick them right away and they were harvesting. I mean, I just learned an awful lot about all that um, harvesting of, um, making wine and all of that. It was just, it was really special. <laughs> it's such yeah. a beautiful time of year. Yep. <laughs> yeah, all those, uh, the smells and all those, you know, just how quickly they have to do everything. Yeah, that's true, actually. I didn't think of that. Um, one other thing, Chris, I wanted you to mention a little bit about the tapestry that you... Oh yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that. Oh yeah, I, I, I tapestry wove for 10 years and I loved it. Um, but you know, you could do, you know, maybe do this much a day, you know, on these tapestry weavings. And they were, um, I mean, I pretty much sold all of them except for two, which I gave to my daughter. But that was the first time with one of them, my uh, uncle sent me a whole bunch of, I got interested, I saw in New York City this restoration of some weavings. And I got all excited because they had these feathers in them. So <laughs> my uncle sent me from Nebraska all these pheasant feathers. So I made this huge pheasant feather weaving and it was all about the birds flying south and it had ridges in it and I inlaid all of these feathers. And it was the first time I ever had hunters really interested in my work. <laughs> it was kind of funny. <laughs> I go like, interesting. <laughs> Cause they, they, I think they, you know, uh, that when they're sitting outside, it's very similar for me painting outside. They observe nature, they're sitting up in, one of those little huts, you know, and um, they, it, they are observing nature around them. So, but I never thought about it in that way, but I, you know, being outside, it was, uh, yeah, I learned it. I've learned an awful lot, learned a lot about geese flying in. Um, some old timer would come up and talk to me about how, you know, when, if a geese loses its partner, he becomes the head and just tells all the other geese to come flying in. So it was just, it was, I, I've had so many stories told to me about all kinds of things when I'm outside. So it's been fascinating. <laughs> oh, amazing. Well, I want to thank everybody. We're going to take some questions, Chris. Oh, all right. <laughs> a few questions. Um, so just a reminder, uh, everybody, if you could stay on mute, we're going to let Doreen, who's helping us this evening, take the questions. And my name is Tamar from Gallery Sitka in Shirley, Mass. And this is Chris Reed with us from New Hampshire, from Jaffrey. So uh, Doreen, could you help us with the questions? Sure. Um, Dan would like to know, do you use photography to capture the outdoor scene um, or the moment and bring it back home and paint from the photo? 
I do not paint from the photo. I do, I do um, reference all, um, I, I take reference, reference material and then um, I will work right on spot. And then sometimes if I need to reference it for um, something, I will use the photo um, with that. But I try to really finish everything up on site. Um, so that's the answer to that. I, I do not, I just use it as reference material. Okay. I, I, I especially use the photo because I have a tendency to be complicated and put in too much. So I will use it to simplify my um, original piece that I'm working on and to capture the light to see. But I'll stand um, on a day, I'll stand outside pretty much all day just to see which light I really want on a, on a piece. And um, so I'll do study works, um, small pieces first, and then I will decide, oh, well, I really like the light on that. And as you get accustomed, you, then you just keep going back at that time and maybe the light lasts, you know, five, 10 minutes, you know, and you just try to capture that light. And I really just try to capture the essence of the truth of something, you know, it's not just about the place, it's just about a feeling that it gives me. So um, I hope that answers the question. I, I don't really work, I like to work right from the site itself. Sounds like it did. And Deb, Deb Giordano, um, she's asking, uh, what kind of paper do you use? Uh, you stated you underpaint it. Do you use alcohol and different color pastels? Um, I actually use Gamsol and I use um, quinacrine orange and quinacrine red. Um, and I'll use um, cad yellow and alizarin crimson sometimes uh, to get a cooler effect. Um, and I use U art paper, but I have made my own paper before. I've tried, I've experimented with all kinds of things um, so that sometimes, you know, you can like paint the texture in. And then I even used, um, I mean, because of Dagon and everything, I, I had to experiment with all kinds of stuff. And so I, I used paper mache with a grit. And that, that was really quite fascinating because you could kind of layer things on, let it dry and um, capture like a different, get a different, whole different texture and um, color, because you can make some of the colors stay so that it looked transparent that was coming in underneath. So I've really try to always experiment, <laughs> but all artists experiment <laughs> when they're working, you just kind of, that, so that, I hope that answers the question. I usually use UART paper. I, years ago, I, there was another paper that I just loved and then they, they, they no longer, produce that. So and I still keep, you know, if they say that it, I, I still will buy different kind of paper. Um, so, and I, I think I'm, I'm trying to think, this one I used a, a board. Um, um, I, I can't remember what the name of the board is, but on that one, and it just, it, it works up very quickly. Um, so I try not to stay with one kind of paper because, um, I don't want to get used to too much of the drag, but most of the time it's U art paper and different grids that you can get. I, I kind of like the 400 grid, um, but I've used the 320, but it, it, it's a little gritty. So 400 is usually about what I, I hope that answers the question. She, she said 400 question mark. Um, 400 grid, yeah, that I use. I think she's asking what that might be. Oh, um, the, 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 the pastel paper comes in different grids. So you can get like, um, if I was doing a still life that was fine, you could get 500, 600 grid. It's just a tighter, um, uh, I mean, um, it's like sandpaper. So it's like, it's the, you know, it's just a finer, something okay, that you yeah. can work on finer. Yeah. So the, the 400 is kind of nice just for um, landscape painting because you can work it up pretty fast. Yeah, it looks like Jennifer would like to know, have you always been a, a, a full-time painter? A what? Have you always been a full-time painter? Um, I taught for quite a few years, but I've always painted. I just always had to paint. I don't, you know, I just always had that. It's hard to teach and be a mother and 
paint and do everything. But my husband has been very supportive of, you know, I knew that when I married him, so that he would be supportive of me being an artist, because that's what I am. I'm an artist. And when you were teaching, Chris, what did you teach? Where, where and what have you taught? All these um, I taught art. <laughs> So I, I, um, I taught at the, a lot at the middle school and um, high school I taught at Conville and I taught at the New Hampshire Institute of Art. And then I did a private school. Um, my daughter went for that for exchange of me teaching there. And um, so uh, at the Wells School and then I just taught at the Sharon Arts Center. So I've done a lot of teaching. Um, but I'm not teaching anymore. <laughs> I'm doing my artwork. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Chris. It's been a real pleasure to have you with us tonight. Um, my name is Tamar. I'm from Gallery Sitka, and this is we're uh, discussing our Harvest Show. Oh, our thank you so much. It was, I it was a challenge for me. I was quite nervous about being interviewed because as an artist, I don't really. Uh, I'm just like don't um, talk a lot. <laughs> But thank you very much. I, it's, a, it's been a good challenge for me. Well, I think it's wonderful. I just want to say, like, um, all of us have been nervous. This is like a new, a new platform in a way. Because of COVID, we couldn't do a proper opening and have wine and cheese and lots of people and music. And we all miss that so much. Um, but I think it's been interesting to see all of you speaking about the work. And you absolutely are capable of talking about it. And it's just wonderful to hear artists and hear their perspective. Um, it's so different than, like we discussed, right? Chris, at an opening, we couldn't have this much dialogue. No, and you can't. I mean, when I have my open art studio here, I get a lot of people asking those kind of questions, and but not everybody gets it, um, you know. Um, so that's always been an opportunity, but yeah, you just can't do that. So thank you very much. Yeah, no thank problem. you for the opportunity. <laughs> thank yes. you for the challenge. <laughs> My pleasure. So the website is gallerysitka.com. There's a header that says harvest right at the top. And all the work is there. And you can see Chris is right at the top because she took our first place in the show. Um, <laughs> that's what our judges decided. So wonderful work. Thank you so much, Chris. This you went, visit my website too. <laughs> okay, that's true. We can Google you. Um, and this is being filmed, so we'll have a copy of this for everyone later if you'd like to watch and listen again. So um, thank you. We'll be back here next Friday. Any uh, final notes, Chris? Um, just, no, that's it. I'm, I'm Chris Reed's studio, so just you can come and see what I'm doing. And uh, you take guests to the studio? Um, I haven't yet, but um, it's a possibility, so... Reach out to you if we want to pop by. Right, reach out to me if you're interested in anything. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you next Friday. Thank you, Jennifer, Jason, Dan. We really appreciate all the guests. Have a good night. Thanks. Bye-bye.